Uh, you know, not a fun moment for you right now, but give, give us an idea, just the emotion that you're feeling right now. You know, I, I beat a lot of ass in my day, you know, and I've also been knocked down and had to bounce back. So um, I can give you a million excuses on earth, but I can tell you right now that I was prepared, I was ready. Um, even in a warm-up, I felt extremely sharp. And sometimes you just have those fights when you go out there and it's like a badass dream. You want to punch hard, but you don't punch. You want to move forward, but you're stepping back. So um, I had too many moments in there. And Kamara, he came out there and he won. So um, I still believe I'm the greatest welterweight of all time. So now my path is getting back and getting a belt. Sometimes everyone thinks that, you know, proving that means you go on a streak and you don't lose and you're undefeated. But sometimes the greatest champions have to face adversity and bounce back and win. So I'm looking to try to run that fight back. I know you said you don't want to make any excuses, but talk about just how you did. I mean, did something surprise? Was his strength, his pace, was it surprising to you? I mean, what, what happened? No, he didn't have a crazy pace. I mean, he was just... He, he was just kind of faint and squatting, and he just made you very well aware that he wanted to clinch and he wanted to get close. And, you know, um, sometimes fighters, um, they want to prove that they can stand with you. They want to prove they can bang. And I said that a long time ago. I said one thing, if I had to give him an a attribute, his composure for a fighter who hadn't fought a long time. And he kept that composure. He stayed to the game plan. You know, he took his time. He was patient. And, um, you know, it just wasn't a good night for me. So, like I said before, you know, we know what I'm capable of. I, I just look to rematch that and run that back, man. That was my fifth title defense. I feel like as a champion and what I've done in, um, in this organization that the performance may not have <laughs> vouched for a rematch, but I think um, my resume does. Well, that's what I was going to say, man. I'm sure you saw Colby Covington out there with the belt on his shoulder, you know, yeah. trying to say that he's next. I tried my best not to look at his ass. I saw, I saw him on my peripheral, and I was like, bloop. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, you know. Kobe's doing what he think he has to do to, you know, try to put himself in the limelight. But, you know, tonight we saw Kamar Usman come out there focused, came out there with a game plan. And, um, I mean, what do I say? Do I make excuses, you know? I've been here before. You guys seen me. I got knocked out by Nate Marquardt. And what did I do? I came back running. I came back gunning, you know. And, um, you know, this is my path. Like, I don't like the path. I was in the locker room confused as hell. How could this happen? You know, I was so ready, so prepared. But, you know, my path has never been easy. So, um, it's just showing me that God wants me to come back, bounce back, show you guys the champion that I am, and, um, you know, dust this off and get that belt back. And last thing for me, Tyron, immediately after the fight, I mean, it looked like you, you walked over to, to Usman and just to congratulate him. I'm just curious kind of what message you had for him there. You, know, you got to get props, man. You, you're fighting against somebody that all these promos are saying, I'm one of the greatest welterweights of all time. I knocked a lot of guys out. I beat a lot of wrestlers. I beat every specialist. And I've been in this game for a long time. And, you know, him coming from the Ultimate Fighter show, it was a person that I'll have a lot of conversations about who to fight and how to do it and all these different things. So I joked around about that. But technically, to a certain standpoint, you know, you know, he wasn't somebody that, I mean, he wasn't underneath my wing, but we would conversate even up to this fight. We talked and text message, and I said, you know, uh, I'm probably going to whoop Kobe ass first, but after that, me and you were going to fight when I thought I was going to fight Kobe. So I got to give him his respect because, like I said before, I've been on the other side of the stick a lot. You know, I beat a lot of people up, knocked a lot of people out, won some close fights that people may have thought they won. So I just had to make sure he knew that he got my respect and he got his, um, his um, proper respect for winning the night. Ty, uh, Tyron, it looks like uh, Colby's going to get the next shot. If okay. that, in fact, is the case, who do you want to fight, or would you wait till? Yeah, you know, this is a crazy game. You know, I can sit here and say, oh, I'll get the shot, whatever, whatever, but, you know, you never know. People get injured, things happen. Kobe might pull a couple more stunts and <laughs> kick himself out the title fight. So I'm going to just be prepared. I think, like I said before, as a champion, as, you know, took out Robbie Lawler, who's, you know, fighter of the year twice, defending his belt four times, I feel like, a rematch, you know, Kobe's been kind of sitting around and sitting around and trying to call a shot. So, but if that's what, what the organization wants to do, you know, this, this is their organization. I'm blessed to be able to fight here, uh, make a living and prove that I'm the best in the world. So um, to be honest, I really don't have a person in, in the back of my mind. And I wonder, it, did this performance kind of remind you when you fought McDonald, you know, where? Yes, I said that in the locker room. Yeah. It was a Roy McDonald fight. Uh, I was equally prepared for that fight. And it was like everything that I was telling myself to do, my body wouldn't do. Uh, I told my coach Dean, I was like, you know, I'm like, I want to apologize to you guys because y'all worked so hard and I was so ready. I said, but coach, I'm gonna just be real with you. Like tonight, it was just weird. I was just flat, and I don't, I don't even really know why. But um, 
when you're on this stage, you can't have a bad night. I mean, you can have a bad sparring day. It's times like, you know, I've been open about this. I don't win every sparring day. And if I do, I'm training with the wrong people. <laughs> you know, it, it was times I lost a sparring day. And uh, I said, Coach, we got to run that back tomorrow. And we do it again. But you can't have a bad night um, in the octagon. And um, tonight I have one. Tyron, uh, we had a press conference across the street a few weeks ago, and you were asked if um, you felt that you were maybe spreading yourself too thin with all your commitments in show business. Because you have been very, very busy, and I know that stuff takes a lot of energy and focus yeah. to do it. You've been very active in show business. So in retrospect now, do you think maybe that you have spread yourself a bit too thin? You know, a lot of these things, you know, um, like the music, I got an album drop in. That shit's already dropped. I can go grab that. Chaos Theory by the Archangels. Um, that's been a year. So I didn't just record that whole album during training camp. The album was done, and when I was in Hawaii, we put the final touches on it. Um, you know, movies take a whole year to come out. TV shows take six to eight weeks. So um, when I get in training camp, I get in training camp. Yeah, you know, but it is something that I'll look back and be like, you know what? I got a lot of energy, focus on making sure everything's going, um, you know, to where it's supposed to go, P's and Q's, all these different celebrations or whatever. And, um, you know, as I was doing it, I was like, no, I'm training my ass off. And if I train four to six hours a day, the rest of the hours a day, I can do whatever the hell I want to. I don't have to sit down and watch Netflix. I can go to the recording studio. I can read a book or I can work on different businesses. So um, to answer your question, I don't believe it did, but I'll, I'll sit back with the team and we'll reevaluate some of that stuff. There was a, a moment during the fight when y'all were in a clinch exchange and Usman hit you with several uh, right hands to the body. Um, they, they weren't, you know, real hard. He wasn't winding them up, but there was a lot of them. Did that affect you? No, the right hands didn't affect me, but he did elbow me one time. I was like, fuck that. Uh-uh. Because I done been elbowed up a couple times against Nate, so that, that got my attention quickly. But um, he was just smart tactically. When you in the clinch, you know, the referee told us he's going to give us a couple warnings before he break us. So he was throwing those punches to maintain position. It makes sense to lean on me if you really think about it from his standpoint. Does it make sense to just stand out in the open and just trade? Probably not. You know, maybe he can hold his own, but um, in the larger scheme of a game plan, it makes sense to push me against the cage, try to get me to the ground, try to control position and stay as close to me as possible and get me thinking about your wrestling attack. So I don't think he was even throwing them to try to hurt, you know, body punches and knees, you know, if you can't take a punch to the body, you need to get out of you get out of UFC. Uh, and lastly, did you uh, sustain any injuries in there? Anything serious or no? Just a big ass lip and um, my eye a little sore, but outside of that, I'm, I'm healthy. And that's you know, I mean, it sucks to take that away, but if you think about three of my last four fights, I had injuries that require surgery. So though this sucks and I feel like crap, watching somebody walk around with a belt that I feel like is mine. I didn't su sustain any injury that I think is going to cause surgery. So now I can, you know, get back on the grind and get ready to fight again. Thank you. Taryn, you said you didn't feel quite right in the, in the fight, that yeah. things just weren't going the way that you thought they were going to go. When yeah. did you recognize that? And were you talking in the corner about making any particular adjustments? Yeah, you know, and, and I don't want to say that, like, I didn't feel right to make it seem like Usman didn't come out there and deliver. He came out and delivered. That's flat out, you know, and... I just personally know, and you guys personally know what I'm capable of, and it was an uncharacteristic fight of me, you know. So I kind of knew early on, and, you know, sometimes when I start a fight, if I come out blazing, I come out with combinations, I kind of get in that rhythm, I stay in that rhythm. Um, this time it was just something real weird. It was like, you know, he was dropping down and squatting all low, and I was, it was almost like I was hypnotized, like, I know you're about to shoot. I'm trying to time when you do it so I can try to hit you with this uppercut. And then, you know, then I, I think I just got to the point where I was just kind of waiting on him to shoot. And then um, in fighting, you wait too long. You know, you might get the shot, but you might get some right hands. You might get a kick. You might get something else. And then I just really never got in a rhythm. Um, and, and in a fight, especially one of this caliber, you know, you want to kind of set the precedence early. Hey, Tyron. What's up, my man? You had mentioned 185 a few times in the lead up to this fight. Is that at all a possibility, or are you focused on, on staying in one? Man, I got to get that belt back first, you know. I mean... I can't, I can't leave my division like that, you know. Um, I got to go back and get my belt back. And then um, from that point, yeah, I woke, I woke up to 185 and um, tried to grab that belt. But right now, like, that's what's confusing me. I had this whole game plan about beating this guy, beating Kobe, going to get the 85-pound belt, defending her, you know, and then, and then sitting down and saying, what the hell is next? So now 
a detour. <laughs> I got to go get my belt back. Probably, you know, defend it again because I, I can't assume um, if I beat Usman that a rematch wouldn't go for So I probably have to fight that, that division a couple times before I try to go up and um, grab the other belt. And then just last thing for me, the, the fight before yours was, was Ben's fight, and it was, uh, it was, it was kind of crazy and wild. Yeah. I don't know if you caught any of that before your fight. Yeah, I can't watch my friend's fights yeah. before. So I, I seen him get hit with a couple shots, and I just turned to the side because, you know, I don't want my emotions to get involved with it. But it looked like he had a choke, right? And, and the referee thought Robbie was out, but he wasn't out. Is that true? What happened? He said he wasn't out, but we're, we're, I don't know. I mean, it, look, it looked like it, but I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I talked to Robbie a little bit afterwards, too. Thanks.